I've been reading the wise words of the world's top audiophiles, or should I say the web's top audiophiles. Slight difference there. These people clearly have money to spend in orders of magnitude greater than I do, and probably you do. And coincidentally with having all that money, they have the best ears in the world, which is something money can't buy. So when they listen to music on their highest of the high-end system and compare what they hear with what most people would call perfectly adequate, they hear things like... It focuses the energy and dynamics without losing even a smidgen of layering profundity. The leading edges of piano notes are crisper without compromising the flow of the piece. The echo clings eagerly to the performer's crooning. Not only does it thump out crescendos with conviction, but it goes from loud to quiet again with grace and fluidity. Transients coming off cymbals, snare drums, and vocals were leading-edge perfect, creating a surgical view of the music that was only revealing, never analytical. That's certainly a lot more detail than I can hear. If I'm listening to music on a system that's technically adequate, I hear music, a wide, flat frequency range, no distortion, and no noise. When I say I hear no distortion and no noise, that doesn't mean that there isn't any, but it's so low that I could never possibly hear it. So, I'm a frequency response, distortion, noise kind of guy. If that all specs out okay, I'm perfectly happy. And here, in the third decade of the 21st century, this is normal. Okay, loudspeakers and listening rooms accepted. But everywhere else, all of the measurable parameters are perfect to a degree beyond the limits of human hearing. Well, at least my human hearing. But audiophiles, audiophiles with money, they can hear issues, problems, and benefits that I can't. There's no way going back to... The leading edges of piano notes are crisper without compromising the flow of the piece. ...that I could hear that when comparing an adequate system with an ultra-high-end system. I can hear crispness of notes comparing a Yamaha and a Steinway piano, and how the piece flows comparing Yu Jia Wang with Benjamin Grosvenor, both of whom I've heard live playing the same music. But in an audio system... I can hear deficiencies in frequency response, distortion, and noise when they are present. That's all. And there's no such thing as a benefit in some deviation in frequency response, some audible amount of distortion, or, heaven forbid, noise. OK, there are other degradations. For instance, wow and flutter in tape recorders, and a CD, incorrectly mastered without dither. But when things are done right with modern equipment, Everything's just fine, so let's just listen to the music. So this is my opinion, and if you have a different opinion, then that's fine. We can agree to differ, or just differ, or just disagree, or just argue our positions without being open to possibly changing them. But strongly held, though my opinions are, I like to look at things from different points of view. So let me do that. Firstly, I suppose I have to attend to the issue of my hearing. As you might have noticed, my age is fairly advanced, and this means my hearing at high frequencies is restricted. Maybe there are other issues that an audiologist might detect. So it's quite possible that many people can hear things that I don't. So I might not notice a high frequency roll-off above 10 kilohertz or so. Or maybe there's noise that's below my threshold to detect. But these are all measurable parameters. So if there are any deficiencies, they're right there in the specs. But what about things that don't appear in specifications? Well, digital jitter is a possibility. But the thing there is that it manifests itself as distortion and noise, which most definitely are measurable. But there could be other things, other levels of perception that mere machinery cannot detect, and only humans, dogs and bats can. So... When an audiophile comments on a smidgen of layering profundity, they're using words very subjectively to describe something they perhaps really are hearing. Another typical audiophile comment might be about the fullness and openness of the soundstage. Yes, this could be a genuine comment if referencing loudspeakers or the listening room. But it could also be made regarding a cartridge, tone arm, amplifier, maybe even the turntable in the sense of the thing that goes round, or in digital audio, it could be a CD player or SACD player, streamer, DAC. And back in analog, your preamp, power amp, or headphone amplifier and headphones. It could well be the case that even allowing that both an adequate system and an audiophile system might have specifications beyond the limits of human hearing 
the audio file can still detect differences in the fullness and openness of the soundstage or other subjective audio qualities. I think now might be a good time to bring in Heisenberg, the guy with the uncertainty principle, which states, The more precisely the position of some particle is determined, the less precisely its momentum can be predicted from initial conditions, and vice versa. Not to be confused with the observer effect, that measurements of certain systems cannot be made without affecting the system, that is, without changing something in a system. Although that could be a thing too. And then there's the quantum mind hypothesis. That quantum mechanical phenomena, such as entanglement and superposition, may play an important part in the brain's function and could explain critical aspects of consciousness. I'm not going to go into quantum mysticism, but there's a Wikipedia page on that, if you're interested. Anyway, for me to argue against my frequency response distortion noise self, it could possibly be the case that audiophiles can hear stuff that can't be measured. I don't really think so, but if and when facts emerge that contradict my beliefs, I promise that I'll change my mind. OK, one more point that I hope you'll comment on below. When I've talked about an adequate system, I mean a system that plays back the audio with no change in frequency balance, no audible distortion and no audible noise. But is it possible that an audio file system could actually improve the sound? Answer me that. See you soon.